In this lecture, we'll explore assembly language and we'll use Arduino's inline assembly to write some assembly-like code. It's good to imagine the low and low-level languages to mean lower or closer to the computer's hardware. So between high-level languages like Python, Ruby, Java, uh, and the hardware, there is a language called assembly language which is converted into machine code. Machine code is, are the zeros and ones, the binary, but of course that's always represented in hexadecimal. So you'll see a symbol like 0x and then a bunch of hexadecimal numbers to represent that machine, instruction, that machine code instruction. When we talk about assembly, we have to talk about these things called mnemonics. And before I define a mnemonic, let's go ahead and look at a real example here. So on the left side, we have the machine code instruction. And on the right side, we have the assembly language equivalent. And all the first line is doing is it's moving into, it's moving regi into register 5, R5, the number 25 hexadecimal. So just imagine converting 25 into an 8-bit number, for example, and then we're moving that into an 8-bit register or a 16-bit register. register. It doesn't matter. We're moving it into a register 5. Okay. So that MOV is the mnemonic. It's a, it's a nice, easy-to-understand word that stands for a machine code instruction. On the left-hand side, you see that that, that that must be 7. So 7, and then D must be register 5, and then the number 25. Look at the next line. We have MOV again, so there's that 7. And then we have re into register 7, that must be F in this architecture. And then we're moving into that register the number 35, the number 34. So these, these little codes, MOV, ADD, JMP, JUMP, all of these little codes, and we'll explore more throughout the course, these are all mnemonics. But you must be able to identify a mnemonic and be able to know what they, what they do. It's possible to take a chunk of assembly code and give it a unique name so that you can refer to it later. So let's imagine we have a label here, and underneath that we have, let's say, 15 instructions. We can just simply say here, JUMP here later on, and we can refer to that spot in our code or that block of code. Earlier we saw an instruction where we moved into register 5, the number 25. And so that whole thing is called an opcode. But if you broke it down into a binary format, it would look something like the 16-bit opcode here. We have the 1110, this, this would stand for the move or the LDI or the LDD, whatever the, op, the mnemonic is. And then you have uh, in this documentation, we have DDDD, which is just referencing that there's four bits or referring to the four bits that are meant for the destination register. In our case, it was the uh, register 5 or the register 7, which was represented by hexadecimal 7 or 5, so of course four bits. And then the eight bits at the end are, re are reserved for the constant. So in our case, it was 25 hexadecimal. We know that 2 takes up 4 bits and 5 takes up 4 bits, so, def so 8 bits. So this right here is a 16-bit opcode. Uh, segmented into four parts. You could have a segmentation that's two parts, uh, three parts, or even one part. Now that we've seen some actual instructions, it's easier to understand the difference between something called RISC and CISC architecture. So, so far we've been using RISC. We have a simple instruction like add or move, and it's done per clock cycle. So one instruction per clock cycle. In a CISC architecture or complex architecture, you have the same thing. You can do four or five things, but you can do it with one simple word like malt. Here are some of the major differences between RISC and CISC. As we saw, RISC is simple instructions. CISC is more complex, like MULT. Because of that, we can say that CISC is programmer-oriented, while RISC is machine-oriented. And the biggest difference, of course, is that RISC is one clock cycle per instruction. CISC could be multiple clock cycles per instruction. Assembly can be divided into three types of statements. We have imperative, declarative, and directives. Imperatives are your mnemonics, so add, move. They tell us what actions should, should be performed during the actual execution. Declaratives declare some, uh, some constants or some storage space. And we won't go into these tables in this lecture, but it's good for you to uh, check these out on your own. We have the op tab, the lit tab, and the sim tab. So these three tables uh, will help you understand how constants are declared and how they're stored, etc., and reference later. And directives tell us how operands should actually be interpreted. A very popular directive is EQU. EQU equates a value to a symbol. So in this case, we have count equating to 25, and so 25 can be uh, represented with count, and so we can say move into register 3, the number 25, in other words, we can say move into register 3, count. Popular declaratives like DC or DS, they declare storage space or declare constants. One of the questions that may have come up when we looked at labels was what would happen if we reference a label before we actually declare it somewhere in our program? So this is a real issue, and this issue is called forward referencing. So a two-pass assembler resolves this by putting these labels into something called a sim tab, keeping note of them, and then later on in the second pass, using that sim tab, using that table to resolve those issues, to resolve the forward referencing.
We've looked at mnemonics, we've looked at opcodes, and so all of these differ across different architectures. But one of the things that remains constant are the, are the addressing modes. And uh, we saw LDI, LDM, LDD. Let's go ahead and define what those really are. So let's start with LDM. In this case, the mnemonic can be different in your architecture, but we're going to use LDM to mean immediate addressing. And what this does, if we, if, if we can imagine a block of memory with an address and the content itself, so memory address 100 has something has a number 116 in it. Okay, so what we do is we load immediate the number, tw tw uh, the number five, and you'll know it's immediate because you have that hashtag. So load immediate number five. We don't touch the memory, we don't touch the address, we just take the number and we store it right into the accumulator. Here's a mnemonic and an example of load immediate in the AT Mega. Load direct is pretty straightforward. The operand is going to be an address, so LDD101. We'll go into memory address 101 and pour out the contents into the, accum into the accumulator. Again, here's a mnemonic and an example of direct addressing in the AT Mega. Indirect addressing will get its address from the content of the address provided. So in this case, we have LDI101 or load indirect 101. We go to 101, we find our address there, 103. We go to 103 and what we put into the accumulator is going to be 98. Here's a mnemonic for load and direct in the AT Mega. Finally, index addressing will use something called the index register to, to build its, its actual address. So we have LDX101. We have two in the, in the index register. We add those two together. We get 103. We pour that into the, into the accumulator. Index addressing can be used to reference some data in an array if it's stored at every third element, for example. So we want to reference something in the third element and then the sixth element and then the, and the ninth element, et cetera. We can put three in our index register and use that to offset and get to the data that we want to get to. Here's a list of useful Arduino mnemonics that we can use in our project. Some of these we're already, we're already familiar with. We know jump, we know add, we know increment, etc. Our jump just jumps to a label. So you, you, by using that with serial, we can see that we can actually jump to a label if we create one called start. SBI will set a bit into a memory location. So in register four on, on the Arduino, if you set bit five high, that makes it an output. So if you're familiar with Arduino already, you know that when you, let's say you want to light up a pin on, on um, a, a, an LED on pin 13. Well, you have to set that pin to be either an output or an input. In the case of lighting up an LED, it needs to be an output. So by setting bit five in register four high, you're actually saying that you want it to be an output. And then by setting bit five and register five high, you're actually turning on that LED. So if you run this code, you should see your LED on your Arduino light up. CBI will clear a bit, so you can use this with SBI to go ahead and turn the, the LED on or off. So you're, clear, you're setting a bit and you're clearing a bit. As we saw earlier, LDI will load some data immediately into a register. So using LDI with increment, we can go ahead and see how we can actually move data across registers. And this was the whole point of the project. So we have a label start. We have a load immediate into register 16, the number four. And then we increment register 16. And we can store that value as A and print A to prove that we've actually moved four across the registers. We can also use add to prove that we can add data across registers and, and print out the output.